Thank you so much for tuning into the Cool Oh my God, in the first segment, we talk about the World Cup draw. Who's in? Who's out? Where does Chicago fire? What group are they in? Is Iran going to do anything? Why is that name misspelled? <laughs> Why? What, the MLS World Cup is going to be a lot of fun. We also talk about Sunil Ganali. Uh, Sunil <laughs> Galati. We're putting him on a boat with no oars, and we're pushing him out into the middle of the ocean. Sunil Ganali, <laughs> my favorite U.S. soccer president. <laughs> He's going to show up with a mustache. I'm Sunil Ganali, and I'm running for um, USSF. Oh, no, I am a different guy. Uh, in the second segment, uh, we talk about the MLS Cup playoffs the second legs and we get a little 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 bit of preview of uh, the MLS Cup finals oh, yeah. so it's going to be very exciting we're going to be in Toronto this coming Saturday Toronto we're after you and Tor we're doing a big event so stay tuned for more information about that and more on this episode of the Cooligans hey this is Alexi Lawless there is nobody in U.S. soccer that is more important than the Cooligans Yeah, baby! Yes! Come oh, on! Welcome to the show. Oh, this is the Cooligans, and this definitely isn't our second take at doing an <laughs> intro. No, because we <laughs> totally had the the flag waving before. Yeah, there the, was no, no mistakes get <laughs> no, made here. We have never made a mistake on even once on this show. Uh, welcome to the show, everybody. Uh, uh, what, um, a, what a wonderful time. It's the, it's the show before the show. Oh, the it's big the show. show before right here. Yeah. The repeat. <laughs> the the yeah, the 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 can can Toronto get revenge? Let me just tell you something. I do not want to go back to Toronto <laughs> in this weather, but I am excited for a repeat because the the game last year both teams were in a full strength. It's going to be a big one. Yeah. Everyone's, everyone's here. Everyone's here. It's going to be much like Thanksgiving. <laughs> Hope you made a lot of food because everyone's here. I think that it's rare that we get a second uh, crack at MLS, you know, like, yeah. like we, we, especially at a final, uh, it, it was our first time going to, that was uh, our very first, going to the MLS Cup. We found out days before <laughs> and we had to scramble. <laughs> There's a lot of things that we learned and we've we've adjusted. Uh, Some things that did not work out as easily this year. <laughs> Which What's is, up with these press passes, guys? But we're learning. Uh, we're trying our best. Uh, but, uh, but we are very excited. So again, yeah, welcome to the Cooligans uh, podcast. You're the, the gulliest of soccer podcasts. Yeah, it's by far the funniest soccer podcast in the history of the world. So, I mean, you know that already. Totally. I don't know why we say it. <laughs> there's right now, there's like a 12-year-old kid listening going this sounds like the gulliest soccer <laughs> podcast in the That's world the, uh, and yeah. then we say it and they're just like oh okay cool well, but like we don't have to say it anymore also if if, if there's a kid that is saying uh this is a, the gulliest soccer podcast that kid is also the gulliest kid <laughs> yeah. i've ever met <laughs> that kid is on his way to a large jail to visit his parents uh, <laughs> that is, yeah, if a kid is saying if if you're a child if you're under the age of 18 Probably not a child at that point, but you know what I mean. <laughs> if you're under the age of 18 and uh, you listen to this podcast, uh, record yourself saying that we're the gulliest soccer podcast in the world, and we will play it on this screen right Yeah, there. that'll. I mean, we gotta, we gotta do that. I mean, it, it is weird that you're asking children to only send specific videos. children. Fully clothed. <laughs> This is not a Roy, a Ray, Roy Moore. This is not a, yeah. <laughs> You're simply saying we're the Gullia soccer podcast. I, I would like to influence the youth I would, yeah, negatively <laughs> in this manner. You know? Also, uh, adults can send stuff too. I mean, yeah. also fully clothed. Without Please, that is also required. everyone. From I mean, now on. You need to be fully clothed if uh, if you want to be on the screen. On the screen. Otherwise, you're, gonna, you're just going to go. If you're not fully clothed, do not send it to me. <laughs> you send that directly Please, to Christian. Do not send it to yeah. me either. Uh, uh, yeah. Send it to Mike Coscarelli, our. <laughs> <laughs> Our new, uh, I guess, what is he, tech board producer? producer yeah, man. Uh, He's everything. So, welcome, uh, exactly, welcome to the Cooligans, everybody. Yeah, and we are, yeah, we are your favorite stand-up comedians who host a soccer podcast, and we're very excited. Uh, we, we will be in, in Toronto uh, for MLS Cup, and uh, yeah, and it's going to be, like, like we said, uh, a, you know, some revenge, uh, a, a, nice, a nice little rematch, but a lot's happened before. Uh, yeah, we'll get to that. We'll we talk will. a lot about the game. And we're going to break down every nitty gritty. No, we're not. But we are going to talk about the game. We just, before that. Before that, the World Cup draw. We have to talk about we the World talk Cup draw. We got to talk about it. It is, uh, you know, obviously. Have other people talked about it? Yes. But did we talk about it? No. <laughs> no exactly. That's so, what's important. Uh, we'll go through it uh, pretty quick and maybe not, yeah. uh, you know, talk. try not to talk about too much that you guys have already uh, heard about. But 
Boom. Boom. There it is on what? the on the background. This is way too. Yeah, this the... is if you're listening and not watching, we just did uh, Marvel, the marvels of technology. Uh, we just switched right from the waving flag, which uh, Jay Bradle is still scared of, to the uh, Russia World Cup draw. Look, I, people have said that there's no group of death, you know. Um, it depends on how teams play. You know, we're not going to go over everyone. Obviously, Russia gets in no matter what happens, and they get to be first. They get the red ball, right? The ball was red or blue, so yes, you could yes, easily yes. spot it, right? Um, you know, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Uruguay, I, Russia and Uruguay sh- and Egypt, I think. Actually, Uruguay and maybe Egypt should be at the top of that. Egypt playing really strong. They got Mo Salah. Okay, yeah. You know, Mo Salah playing crazy right now in Liverpool. Um, I, think he's, I think he has the most goals in the league. Uh, currently, yeah, I think it's, yeah. I think he might have ten or something. It's like that. Crazy, yeah, he's doing. Remember he's... when Arsenal almost signed him? <laughs> Glad, good thing they didn't. Good, <laughs> good all, that that worked out uh, great. Manchester, what a great game. Speaking of Arsenal, shut up, <laughs> yo, Jesse, Millie Rock, Lingo. <laughs> I can't believe we got Millie Rock done. <laughs> um, and I will say, I was watching that at a bar in New Orleans, and everyone. First of all, there are no last calls in New Orleans. Did you know that? Uh, no, I didn't know that. You could perpetually drink. They're allowed to serve you whenever you want. Okay. And you're allowed to walk on the street while drinking. There's just no rules. I mean, if you can walk, because you're <laughs> obviously very, very drunk. There's just no rules in that town. <laughs> and if you're uh, a lady in heels, it's <laughs> yeah. a nightmare. Yeah, you're not a doing well. A pregnant woman could walk into a bar, <laughs> nine months pregnant, walk into a bar at eight in the morning, and they will serve them a beer, and she could walk out with it and walk the streets. You're just not allowed to walk around with glass. So, oh, you got to put it in a to-go cup. That's the only rule they have. But I was watching the Arsenal match there, okay. and everyone seemed really excited. And then it, the, the atmosphere changed pretty quickly. <laughs> uh, so we, we don't need to talk about that. But I will say uh, that Group A, I can imagine you know, Egypt and Uruguay walking out. Group B looks like it's going to be Spain and uh, Portugal. I don't think the – what is IR Iran? Iran. Oh, uh, uh, Islamic Republic of Islamic Iran. Republic yeah. of Iran. Yeah, I've never seen that before. <laughs> yeah. It looked like somebody remixed <laughs> the name for Iran. Uh, so I can, Morocco, you don't stand a chance. Iran, <laughs> you don't stand a chance. Spain versus Portugal, they're just too strong. It's not that you're bad. Yeah. They're just too strong. Uh, so they're going to move on. France, Australia, Peru, Denmark. I would love to see Peru and France. Uh, uh, you would love to see Peru in France? No, <laughs> Peru and France. Oh, I... Advance. <laughs> you know what? How about we just move Peru to France? People have brought this up before in history. I'm just the first to say it out loud. Uh, Australia is in that group, and there's a, a rumor that uh, Klinsman may want the, the Australia job i think it's uh, it's a it's a job vacant or is it is it or is it new zealand new he, zealand is new vacant. zealand oh yeah i think he he wants that uh that job i mean when you say australia i mean new zealand and australia they shouldn't even be two separate countries no know? i mean <laughs> new zealand is essentially like saying yeah we should Delaware. put we should definitely put <laughs> new zealand in australia but, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah let's do that neither of which are going to take a peru spot in france so peru you're worried about it you still get to go to france okay uh, um, yeah, wh- New Zealand doesn't stand a chance. Australia, I, I, well, New Zealand's not in it, but uh, Australia, who I would love to see. They have a very passionate fan base. Yeah, I, I would honestly, love to see them move I, forward. I That's think, uh, yeah, I don't, I mean, Denmark has a uh, Christian Eriksen. So, I mean, uh, they had their moment. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think it might be France and Denmark. Or uh, half of Peru's players are doping, okay? They are going to come. <laughs> <laughs> why, why are you making that accusation? Gonzalez or Guerrero, what was the, the, the forward's name? Oh, I think it's Guerrero, yeah. Yeah, he got he got left out of the last match for uh, doping. Okay. Yeah, performance and as in drugs. Clearly, they're going to win. They're going to come in jacked. <laughs> they're all going to look like Will Bruin. They're all just going to be monsters. <laughs> all torsos. Yeah, <laughs> nothing but all top tall. <laughs> just a bunch of top tall Peruvians. Uh, clearly, that's the team that's going to advance. I would love to see Peru and France move on. Group D, Argentina, Croatia, Iceland, Nigeria. Nigeria got some players. They got some ballers. Yeah, but I mean, the, I think the the the, the stories, especially with the way Iceland plays and how well they did in the Euros, I, I think it's Argentina 
I will go first, on record and to then say Iceland. they do not stand a chance. It's literally going to be Argentina and Croatia. Nigeria could, could make a move. This might be the group of death in the sense that this might be kind of difficult. Yeah. Because Argentina is certainly not playing the best to their ability. Unless Messi is going to get a hat trick every match. Is that going to happen? Because <laughs> you needed it to get in the damn World Cup. Which brings up my next point. Why doesn't America have a Messi yet? Okay. <laughs> Why? Uh, We're the greatest country in the world. Why don't we have a Messi? Okay. Yeah. I mean, people sick. It's, it's people sick. Just let's just put all our money, just put, all our chips are right on We're the table. We're going to move all our Bitcoin. <laughs> Bitcoin. <laughs> Which is doing quite well, by the way. It's doing a little too well. <laughs> Talked to a buddy of mine who trades currency, and I was like, hey, what about this Bitcoin? He said, don't do it. That's the first text he sent. He said, unless you're willing to put 10000 to possibly lose 10000 Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I actually, I purchased, you know, I, I had a Bitcoin when it was like 200 bucks. Yeah. And now, now it's worth like twelve grand. So you still have it? I still have it. Hey, you're what? doing great. <laughs> I'm doing great. I mean, I have... This play money, this fake money. I don't know what it is. I don't know what if it's going to, you know. You're going to hold on to it? You're going to sell? I've heard to hold on to it because it's just only going up. I, I hear that within like a couple of years, it might be, uh, you know, a couple, you know, like 20, 30 grand. Buddy. All right. Then that, that, Cooligan's going to level cool. up right here. <laughs> it's like Alexis is like, oh, that's our money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cooligan's just got $12,000. <laughs> Which it's like is, a, if like you a marriage. Don't know, is eleven thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars <laughs> more than what we currently have. So this is a big move. This, this is, is exciting move. for us. I um, can't believe you did that for us. You bought a big Bitcoin. I should have got us. more. I should have bought should've. more. What you could you, still buy more. You know, I got bullied into thinking it was a stupid thing by people like Alexis Guerrero's. Yeah, so it I didn't was. <laughs> by the way, if this thing collapses tomorrow and it goes down to one hundred twenty bucks, I'm gonna make fun of you. I'm gonna make fun of you. Sure, no but then happens. I only lost eighty bucks, and that's. That's not a big then deal. I'm going to make fun of you for, <laughs> for losing, losing 80 bucks. <laughs> How could you do that to the Cooligans? <laughs> How could you do that to us? <laughs> you lost 11000 of our money. So, uh, so Group D, definitely Croatia, definitely Argentina. Iceland, you're not wrong. I think they stand a chance. Nigeria, they got players. They'll make it fun. They don't stand a chance. <laughs> uh, group That's e. going to be a fun group to watch. Though. Group E, Brazil, Switzerland, Costa Rica, and Serbia. Uh, I mean, Brazil, obviously. And... Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm hoping the Costa three Rica. of them could go in and yeah, fight it out. I'm hoping Costa Rica. I know uh, Rodney Wallace, when he was asked uh, about the World Cup group, Rodney Wallace, NYCFC player who plays uh, for Costa Rica as well. And he said, he was very confident. He said, not only do I think we can get out of the group, he thinks we can win the group with Brazil in there. Did he have a concussion this season? <laughs> Look, to be honest, he might not be wrong because Brazil has moments where they just play really badly. Yeah. They have moments where, like, you know, that's the one thing about their team is that when they play as a unit, they play really well. But for the most part, it's a lot of individual talent. Yeah, and we saw what happened uh, in Brazil. Uh, in the well, last they're just World happy Cup. Germany's not in their group because <laughs> <laughs> that would have been amazing to watch. So just another 7-0 or 7-1. Do you really think Costa Rica can get in? I don't think they can win the group, but I think they can get out of the group. Uh, I think that's definitely possible. I think Switzerland. Switzerland's a very uh, – look, they're 11th in the world. Yeah. I'm I'm wondering just Costa Rica's 22. That's double. Like uh, you know, in, the, in this maths. in this instance, I'm like, I want to see how Concacaf is going to do, and I'll, I you know I'm going to root for. I, of for course, Concacaf, you want Costa Rica you know? to, to do something. You know, I I uh, I just I live and breathe Concacaf. That is, uh, you know, I got I got the yeah, the, which the, I keep telling you that leads <laughs> to cancer. So you have to be careful. Uh, no more vaping Concacaf. <laughs> Popcorn lung. Stop vaping in general. So, uh, what else? Okay. Group F, we got Germany, Mexico, Sweden, and I'm not doing it for South Korea. <laughs> not trying to get this podcast no, we saw, off the air. We saw the World Series worked yeah, out nah, for the son. dude from Houston. Latinos don't get a pass when we make fun of Asians anymore? What is this world come to? Uh, Germany, and dude, I have no idea. South Korea, definitely not. Sweden, you never know. I mean, South Korea. Slotan Ibrahimovic said he's not coming back. I don't know. Yeah, why? Well, I, I, I'm gonna call Ibrahimovic a big fat liar because he's definitely coming back. How could he? Why he would he said turn he's down? retired. He said he oh, won't he do it. Turn down a World Cup? I think he's gonna. Nah, dude. I think he's just gonna stroll in like second match. <laughs> well, they have to give the roster, so maybe he won't do that. But like, I feel like he's gonna go last minute, and everyone's gonna be like, "Oh my god, slot down there." <laughs> I mean, if he does, uh, if he does play, it will feel like you know. It's usually. Zlatan is like the Chuck Norris of, of soccer, you know? Yeah. So, like, if he goes against his word, it's like, well, then, is anything real anymore? You know? Like, I mean, he is... He I is, mean, if anyone's been paying attention the last year and a half, <laughs> there's no such thing as telling the truth anymore. Zlatan so, is... Zlatan, the, do whatever you want. Make, make the World Cup great again, Zlatan. Zlatan is just like the Bible. 
Infallible. Yeah. Infallible. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay. Omnipotent Slatan <laughs> Ibrahimovic. Um, I said omnipotent right, and I got his last name wrong. Welcome to the Cooligans, everyone. <laughs> All right, Group G, we have Belgium. Well, well who do you think? It's obviously oh. Germany. You think Mexico? Germany, yeah. I think Germany, Mexico. They're saying this is Mexico's golden uh, generation. Uh, maybe. Okay. That uh, kid Chuki, who plays for I think PSV. Oh, Chuki, yeah, he lives on my block. I know yeah, Chuki. You know Chuki, <laughs> good, good barber. <laughs> good bar- Char- Chuki gets the <laughs> gets the, the tight fade, tight fade. Yeah, I know his sister. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know Chuki. But the other Chuki, <laughs> the least important Chuki, not the dude who can get you discount on rims. The other Chuki is killing it in somewhere in Europe. He's playing somewhere in Europe. Okay, um, and he's doing really, really well. Uh, everyone's excited to see him in the World Cup. Is that the, the, you know that song? Uh, uh, El El Burrito Sabanero. You know that yeah, song? Of course. <laughs> but it just reminds Chuki sounds. It's like it, the the song goes Chuki 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 Chuki, but it sounds like Chuki 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 Cha. <laughs> if the Mexican fans are not doing that, we need a couple English people we to have, move to we Mexico. We got a chat right there. Man. I mean, come on. <laughs> have you picked a team? Have I picked a for team this World Cup? to support? Uh, Dominican Republic. <laughs> Steve Al <laughs> FC, dog. <laughs> They're clearly not going. <laughs> if Chicago Fire get in there, yeah, why can't yeah, Steve yeah, Al FC why get in there? Why can't Steve FC do it? <laughs> uh, uh, Colombia. Colombia. I'm going to go. Colombia? Yeah, yeah. Because your ex roommate? Because my, yeah, I, I'm, uh, I feel I've, I've been around so many Colombians that I'm just like, that's, I'm just that now. Yeah. yeah. Don't want to get stabbed. I get it. Uh, so I think, <laughs> I think it's going to be Germany and Mexico. Group G, Belgium, Panama, Tunisia, and England. Well, obviously, England's not getting out. Uh, Tunisia so and <laughs> Panama <laughs> moving forward. <laughs> England, if England doesn't get out of this group, they, they, uh, the FA said that Gareth Southgate has the job moving forward, regardless of what the result is in the World Cup. I just want that to be tested. <laughs> I want to see. I don't think. I think. England, How loyal yeah, are you yeah. exactly? Are you being like for real, for real? <laughs> I think England can make it out of the group. I mean, I think it's going to be they Belgium. Good, they should. I mean, there's no excuse. I mean, Belgium. Panama is Pan- going to be parking every bus in that nation on both sides of the canal. <laughs> Marta is going to be right there. <laughs> Roman Torres is going to be just putting his hair as high as it could go to block <laughs> any potential shot at that goal. I think they might feel. Three goalkeepers. I don't know if it's allowed, <laughs> but I think they might do it. Yeah, uh, the I I, I I was joking around about like you know uh, uh, you know Roman Torres is gonna score the the winning goal in the third game to knock England out of the group. Oh, I mean, you gosh. know they're gonna play with a lot of heart. But I mean, look, as much as the the, the story is is amazing, and and the fact that Panama is there for the first time, Roman Torres is a national. Hero, hero, he, he, and this is his last World Cup. He's he, up there in age. He will never have to pay for a beer. He will never have to buy, uh, you know, a brick of cocaine for no, himself. Never. <laughs> he will never. How about that Panama? Dope, they got it. That dope ombre he does, <laughs> dude. He's never gonna have to pay for hair dye again. He is a national hero. Uh, but you, when you look at just a, the a powerhouses of Belgium and England in there, they should go through. Uh, yeah, but. I think it's just big. This is this is Panama's first ever World Cup. Correct. Congratulations. I don't know that um, they're going to make it past the group stage, but whatever. Yeah, you made it. Good for you. You and Tunisia, you can hang out together and watch the games (laughs) after this, because y'all ain't going nowhere. Uh, Panama, sorry, Tunisia, sorry, but it's going to be England and Belgium. Then we got Poland, Colombia, Senegal, and Japan. Yep. I'm reading it on a different screen, which is why I'm saying it differently. You can't see it because I'm blocking it, but it's there. Poland is sixth in the world. Did you know that? Yeah, well, they have Lewandowski. If you Lewandowski. take Robert Lewandowski off it, yeah, they're, they're 96th <laughs> in the world. Uh, it's clearly going to be Colombia and Poland. Japan is strong. Senegal, I, w- I can't wait to see the kits. I wish not every African nation had Puma so that you could make it for big boys. You know what I mean? Okay. Because <laughs> I would love – I just want every – African teams. Uh, oh, you just you just want African people to gain weight. That's yeah. all. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> this is what we need to see. We need to solve the food crisis in Africa so that jerseys get bigger. So that, that I. So yeah, which is uh, look. That's really what's important here. There's no reason. Like, <laughs> you, there's no such thing as like a selfless, uh, you know, a gift or whatever, a selfless thing. It doesn't matter the reason why you're a philanthropist. It's that you are a philanthropist. So it's, yeah, I'm the, not looking for a tax cut. I'm just looking for slightly bigger jerseys. <laughs> How about ones that aren't cut like that? You know, like, you know, like uh, inverted. 
parentheses. I want the real parentheses. Okay, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You're, Adidas. You're, Shouts to Adidas. You are you are a rotund man, and okay. you want you want that. <laughs> Turns out I lost thirty five pounds though, and a lot of my jerseys are not too big, so it's a real shame. So there's all those <laughs> jerseys you would, that didn't fit. Only, only you would find a sh- shame in that. Yeah, lost weight. <laughs> Oh, come boy. on. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with my wardrobe now? Buy new? I had to buy a new belt. That uh, sucked. So, the, so the, yeah. So he that, doesn't care. Those are the World, the World Cup. Those are the World Cup groups. The, the, the World Cup draw in itself, I know you didn't, you didn't watch. I did not see it. The show. Uh, but I was it, flying, right? I think it was flying or I was at a doctor's appointment. Something happened. I don't remember. But uh, I was By in. By the way, cancer free. Did I mention that? <laughs> you don't remember? We you, talked about it. Uh, yeah, because at the top of every show, we normally mention, hey, guys, we're still cancer-free. We keep <laughs> yeah, saying yeah. that. I mean, if you're thinking <laughs> technically you're not that- because of Christian's personality, <laughs> that's certainly a cancer. But, but I mean, uh, my, my, uh, my, my very important part of my body, uh, which was cut into, and I brought up, and I still came in and did the Dave Sarah Can podcast uh, interview. Yeah. So, huh. You're welcome, uh, <laughs> listeners. Yes, um, we did. We did allude to it a little yes, bit. We didn't want to get just too bleeding in a gauze in my <laughs> underwear. But it's been two weeks. I got I, checked up just before this episode, and your boy is good. Okay, so a, pl- a, a round of applause for uh, Alexis and uh, anything to say? All his ap- <laughs> all his appendages. Yeah. <laughs> all three legs have no cancer. <laughs> okay, so. The um, uh, what was I going to talk about? Oh yeah, the show itself. The yeah. the, the the it was on. Uh, they usually have celebrities. They right? had. Um, oh, was that, I mean, I mean, one year it was Char- Charlize Theron, and I was like, okay, World Cup. When it was South Africa, because she's okay, South African. Okay, yeah. Who did? I they? was like, okay. They had so it was in uh, so obviously it was in Russia, and they had. Uh, I don't know who the I don't know the guy's name, but he was the he was on, he uh, um, who was it? Uh, John Oliver. Did when he went to Russia uh, to uh, interview Edward Snowden, yeah. th- there was a uh, there's like he spoke to like the 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 John Stewart or the John Oliver of uh, of, Russia. of Russia, which is like who help host the show. Everything's fine. Every- <laughs> we're still great. Everything's fine <laughs> nightly. <laughs> it's called. Hey, is not Russia awesome again? I mean, it's still great. <laughs> <laughs> Never had to become great. We're still the best. So, but that guy, where like he was talking about how like what the really the line is, where you really can't really you, you can't say much. You can't be too critical of, of politicians. But he was the host of the yeah of the guy. It was him and uh, and another woman. But there was a lot of weird sort of moments and 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 people with that that got social media sort of flipping out. Well, I know everyone. I didn't get to watch it, but everyone was talking about how like when they would pick the ball out of the uh, like the jars they had them mm-hmm. in, and they would open it up, and you know they like show the paper before they did that. They gave it to Vladimir Putin, he wrote in the team that he wanted. Oh yeah, the which, people thought that was a very different uh, thing. FIFA's changing yeah. it up a little bit. I feel like I feel like FIFA not even hiding it anymore. <laughs> Come on, FIFA. Infantino's like do it in front of the camera. It does. It is odd. You know, there were a lot of uh, pictures on social media. Uh, who was uh, who was there? I think there was uh, Pele was there with yeah. and and surrounded by every a bunch of people. And Putin is there holding his hand. I'm like, <laughs> all right. I mean, like we get that it's in Russia, but like this dude also like assassinated like political opponent opponents. <laughs> like, which I mean, is maybe why you should... shake his hand. <laughs> You're like, I'm not gonna upset this gentleman. <laughs> if I was in Russia. Shouts to Russia, by the way. Uh, if I was in Mother Russia, um, I would be very respectful of Vladimir Putin if we were to get an interview. I want you to know that. I'm just saying is that it puts everyone in a weird position because it's like people want to, they, you know, not necessarily like they're trying to support FIFA specifically, but they they support soccer. And but they, that's like saying like you you walked into a room with a mob boss and you wouldn't be like, oh, well, nice to meet you. I hope everything's okay. Tea's warm enough. Yeah. You wouldn't be like, oh, why are we here with this murder? I would but, not But be. also like I don't think many mob bosses would be like, hey, let's take a selfie, guys. Oh, of course <laughs> they would. Yeah, yeah. Is that Pele? <laughs> and he's not going to say hello to me? <laughs> also, let me just wipe the blood off my yeah. hands, all right? <laughs> um, <laughs> could you go this way instead of the, instead of landscape? Can you go portrait? I'm trying you to know, get my shoes. Just a mob boss up. being like, yo, top down. You know, yeah, it makes yeah. me look a little better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, let's do skinny arm. <laughs> you cool with that? Put your hand on your hip. So, yeah, it's just like a, a, a weird like so, part of like social media to be around, uh, to see all those photos yeah. like like if nothing was, uh, nothing was you know, nobody's ever done anything wrong. No, no, in that, in this that. gentleman definitely hasn't <laughs> murdered everyone. So. Uh, but the other moment that was uh, interesting was uh, there they were musicians. Uh, they were, there was music that was really weird where yeah. it, it seemed like Did it was. That guy from that viral. No, you're talking about an ISIS training no. video. What are you talking oh, about? Wow. <laughs> wow. Did we bring up the Saudi Arabian? Uh, no, the, uh, the, the guy who wears the medal on his head. 
And he wears like the really big moon boots. It's like it's like a weird like America's Got Talent from Russia video. No. It's all over the internet. But he doesn't sing. He just like does like, like yodels or something. Yodel, yodel, yodel. I, I, no, I haven't. Met, is, is, is this dude on Spotify? I mean, of course, first of all, everyone's on Spotify <laughs> except us. <laughs> Want to check him out? I'm gonna figure this out. Um, but there, there, there were a couple. There was a, like some dance numbers by a lot, like a you know, uh, you know, the Russian like. Uh, Leg leg kick people or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and then there was the uh, there was the uh, burrito. Burrito was the that's the guy I wanted to mention. They, they had a Russian rapper, a Russian rapper named Burrito. Burrito with one R. Does uh, he sing the song from the middle? <laughs> hey, burrito, that's a, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> chicky, chicky. Uh, reference to one of the earliest episodes of our podcast. Did he? Does he sing the song from the middle? Because you eat burritos. Oh, that's right. You harmonica a uh, burrito. Yeah, I mean, I don't, but he you know, did. you refuse. He to, did everyone. You refuse to let this go. We, we need to. Do, I'm not <laughs> letting it go because I saw it with my own eyes. <laughs> uh, but burrito was a Russian rapper, and, and that's sort of the last thing we expected from a World Cup draw. Uh, you know, just a, a just any rapper in Russia. I, I understand. I mean, rap is in a lot of countries, but this dude, uh, Russian guy, he had cornrows, um, and it just, it just. Cornrows. Corn, it just didn't feel right. It just, <laughs> yeah. it just all, all of it didn't feel right at all. He did. He dropped a couple bars in between, like uh, a, a legit like lounge. But was it bars? It, I mean, it was fire, like for real. Like, was it? Yeah, because top fi- top five is burrito, burrito, <laughs> burrito, burrito, and burrito, <laughs> which also sounds like my lunch order. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, do you want five burrito? Did I stutter? All right, that's exactly what I wanted. Uh, do you see anyone else in here asking for anything? <laughs> How come Starbucks doesn't have burrito CDs where I can just purchase them yeah. with my coffee? Yeah. Also, <laughs> could you stamp this card five times? <laughs> Your boy's trying to get a free burrito. <laughs> uh, but it was strange. Yeah, he yeah. He, he was. I mean, I don't know what he said. Maybe we need. Uh, you know, if somebody was. Uh, I, I should have asked my girlfriend. My girlfriend does speak Russian. Does she really? She does. Uh, she. We is... got to get her to record an intro in Russian. Okay. You are listening to Kool-Aid. <laughs> yes, that's right. I'm, be, I'm, I'm dating a Russian. Murdered. I'm dating a Russian spy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just like it's it's three guys in a trench coat. <laughs> <laughs> sure, but she's she's good to me. That's all that matters. <laughs> you know what? She respects him. So <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. Yeah. All right. Uh, so yeah. So that that is that is the World Cup draw. It was interesting. Yeah, there were. So you wait. You have what was it? What's so the, the guy's name is Vitas. I sent you the link. I don't know if you can play this on here oh i mean i would have to look it up it, it'll, it'll be weird it'll be, I, <laughs> it'll, it'll be awkward but you i mean i could just play it into the mic from okay mike. you've you've seen this a million times so go that's <laughs> <laughs> you, you people have heard this right <laughs> right like he's got lyrics right now <laughs> this is just regular lyrics watch here it goes he drops it oh wait i, I have seen this this is a nightmare. Why oh, are we this doing this? <laughs> that, that. Okay. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's not yodeling. There, there it, is. it is. Okay. All right. Yeah, so, uh, yo, I mean, honestly, Burrito and Vitas need to collab right now. Well, all first that, of all, if they don't have something together, if I don't see a featuring Burrito <laughs> on Vitas's next hit, because I have a feeling, but if you, if you want to Google it, it's V I T A S. And uh, B L B L B L B L B L B L B L. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> easy to Google. <laughs> You're gonna be the only thing that pops up. I wonder if also it, that might mean something in Russian. We might need your I wa- girl. I wonder if, if uh, Vitas from the Portland Timbers can do the, the same kind of singing. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually him. That's him. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you didn't know this guy got a contract with MLS. <laughs> oh yeah. So again, yeah. The, the, we're excited, even though the U.S. is not gonna be there. Obviously, it was bittersweet that the U.S. wasn't there. Uh, By the it, way, Mike Coscarelli said, Russia's like another planet. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it practically is. Uh, uh, well, we're still excited about it. And I hope, uh, you know, Americans, uh, even though it is sad that the U.S. is not there, you got to watch it. Support the World Cup, man. It's, we it's too for, important to, to this country. And to the culture. You got to do it yeah. for the, the re- We're doing this 
not just for all that sweet Bitcoin money <laughs> that we were getting. <laughs> and our new burrito sponsor. Come on, burrito sponsor. <laughs> um, but also for the culture. We're doing this for the culture. We give, we give, uh, we care a lot about, I was going to curse on it to set it not to because it's kind of sentimental. But <laughs> we care a lot about the sport. We care a lot about Americans loving the sport. We care about uh, folks like us having something to listen to that isn't just a bunch of really dry, old, white guys. Um, and that's not all of them, but I'm saying that that was used to be a lot of what I used to watch. <laughs> Some of them are young white guys who are also very dry. Um, but that's the point. It's like we do this so that there's other stuff to watch and to listen to. Look, America's not in the World Cup. If you're a World Cup fan, pick a team, go buy that jersey or get a scarf and go watch those games. Exactly. You have to. Bring your friends. Make it important. Because if we don't do it... It, the sport has a chance to die in this country, and I know maybe we make it to the next one, and I know maybe we get the one after that, maybe. But if we don't, this could all fall apart after this. So, you know, do something. Look all at right? them. Wow. And listen to the wise words you've heard before. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> what a beautiful... <laughs> What a beautiful just appeal, yeah. you know, <laughs> to, to, to the masses. Uh, let's, uh, so speaking of... Uh, speaking of why we're not in the World Cup, Sunil Galati! Yeah, he is saying goodbye! <laughs> <laughs> Sunil Galati ya se va y nunca viene para atrás. Sunil Galati uh, announced that he will be leaving. He will not, he will not be running uh, for... Let's not even say it that way. He's gone. Yo, Sunil Galati Yo. is saying he's Audi 5000. <laughs> I cannot wait. Uh, so, yeah, this is a big news. A lot of people were waiting to see, uh, you know, obviously there is <clears throat> an election for... Uh, for uh, president of U.S. Soccer, yeah, uh, you know, obviously, Cal Martino, uh, Eric Winaldo, Eric there's Winalda, a couple other people, a couple other nobody knows, nobody knows. But I, I was listening to they, they did. Kathy Carter also just announced who is uh, everyone's a little worried. She currently works for SUM for some. Soccer United Marketing, yeah. yeah so, um, so it looks like uh, th there's a couple. I, I mean, I feel like based on what I'm seeing from a social media perspective, like the the like, it seems like the top candidates are. Martino and Winalda. And now Kathy Gardner. You have to... Yeah. There's a couple... There were a couple... She knows everybody. There were a couple other... Uh, there was a... Yeah, Chris Cordero. So, U.S. Uh, I said he's Sunil's assistant. I don't know what he is, but he's second in command to Sunil. Okay. And Sunil didn't back out when he put his hat in the ring. There, but all of a sudden, Kathy puts her hat in the ring and Sunil backs out, which scares a lot of people. Yeah, so, so there's a... Um, there's a YouTube channel called U.S. Club Soccer that hosted a uh, a forum. Yeah, uh, I was I listened to it's 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 legit four hours, uh, which is obviously too long. <laughs> I oh, mean, we it, need to sue because they're copying <laughs> the Cooligans <laughs> format. I mean, here. it's wildly you know it's much shorter than our podcast, uh, but <laughs> the it's it, everyone should li actually take some time and maybe listen to like the first hour i listened to about like 90 minutes of it but it's a it is a forum uh, in chicago with uh, uh paul uh caliguri caliguri steve gans cal martino michael uh winograd and eric winaldo and they all sort of announced sort of their platform each very specifically what they want to do in u.s soccer and it's absolutely fascinating so i didn't got, even know that existed yeah i gotta check that yeah, out yeah it's really really interesting uh it's only available on youtube it's not like in podcast i don't format. know i i saw it so, uh, somebody had retweeted it and then uh then it, then i just watched it on youtube i don't know if it's anywhere else but it, it's uh if you look up if you just look up u.s club soccer u.s soccer president candidate forum i mean why don't we do this why don't we just play that whole audio as the I, break in between the two segments <laughs> Just a, four, <laughs> just a little four-hour break. It's just a little. We'll go <laughs> out, get a sandwich, maybe build a house for humanity, yeah. and then we'll come back. <laughs> it's like, yeah, just download this 82 gigabyte podcast. <laughs> yeah. Just listen. What do you mean? It's too yeah. long. What are you what talking you, too about? Too long for who? What you, you know, gotta do? You must not be a loyal yeah. listener of our show. Also, your country's not even in the World Cup. You got a lot of time. You got a lot of time. No in excuses end. over here. We're in a seven-week break in between playoff <laughs> games and the MLS Cup. Uh, all right. You got a lot of time. <laughs> Uh, but it is it is really interesting. You get to hear uh, a lot in detail about what they're uh, planning to what do. Were your, what were your thoughts from what you heard? 
Winald is the one that I think is the most intriguing to everyone. He well, seems like an outsider. He seems like nobody wants him in the position that is official, which makes all the fans go, well, that might be the guy we need then. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I feel that way uh, from the outside. It does feel that way. He seems like the, 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 the populist kind of... Uh, president. I mean, we're speaking of like. Well, <laughs> but let's he, not say that. But he seems like the black sheep within that. Yeah, industry. yeah. He seems yeah. like the guy that's like going to shake things up, yeah. right? Uh, but he's I, a maverick. I will say, uh, I thought, as far as people who laid out a platform that seemed very uh, interesting, I thought, uh, I thought Cal Martino had a very, uh, like, sort of impassioned platform about really about re revitalizing everything from from the bottom up, and uh, I. I I'm gonna forget. I forgot exactly which guy it was. Um, it, it was in alphabetical order, so I think it was Paul Caligiuri. I think he he also had a really good uh, um, a platform as well. That I felt like it it, it didn't feel as uh, the like grand changes as like Winalda, uh, but it seemed like a, a practical changes to actually make uh, like improvement in U.S. soccer. So uh, I, again, I recommend everybody check it out. Even if you listen to the first hour, you'll hear every at each person's platform, and you can sort of kind of you know, decide for yourself. But when it comes to confidence, and uh, it seemed like Ronaldo seemed like the guy, like yo, I can, I'll, I can do this, because they all, uh, they're, they're all like campaigning. It's like a debate to some degree, but they're all uh, putting out their platforms in front of each other, so they have to like go after the other guy, and it's like, yeah, well, Paul, whatever, but, like, I'm going to do, you know, so they're yeah. very, like, confident about, uh, and they, ha they have to be very confident to, to take the job in, in the first place, but it is, it is really, really good. But this does lead to, yeah, we were and talking about... you don't about have to listen to the whole thing. The third hour is just them chanting, lock him up, uh, to, <laughs> about Sunil, which I don't think you have to. Honestly, my favorite part. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was on the subway listening to him, like, I'm, like, well, I'm getting <laughs> yeah, into yeah. this. I'm really getting into this. I want to buy one of those hats. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I don't need to fact check at all. I'm just gonna buy that but, hat. But look, a lot of people were were calling for Sanu Galati to to step down, and now you know it is happening. So I will how does say it though, feel? Does our people are we happy about this? We all I am, I am. But the reason I'm happy is because this is what's supposed to happen when you fail this miserably. Yeah, you're supposed to walk away. It's supposed to be a bit more shameful. If you look at the way what happened in Italy, it's a bit more shameful. It's I regret what happened. You should be sad for the nation. You should be sad for the fans. You should be sad for what you couldn't do. And then you walk away in a, in a sort of hat in your hands kind of way, right? Yeah. Sunil is just saying like, look, I'm just not going to try to win again. Like that's a bit different. They're, they're, you know, he's not really walking away. What bothers me yeah, is what I think, what can I think happen. He, you want him to like, uh, you know, do do an interview in the fetal position from his shower, just <laughs> <Yeah>. about <laughs> saying why he's Baby, like, <laughs> come, never gonna dance again. That's the song I was trying to think. Uh, no, it's like you're supposed to. The thing is, is like, why are you sticking around this long? All right, I've I've said it before on this podcast. I could be evil, okay? I could be very easily evil. Why would I want to stay in position until the end of my term? It's because I, I could tie up all the loose ends. I could put things into position so that, you know, the people that I don't want to win don't win, or I could put someone else in position. I could start introducing someone who I maybe have handpicked uh, to the most important people you to say, like, here's who you need to throw your... your a puppet, a puppet president. Yeah, you know, just a Manchurian candidate. <laughs> you know, like, that's what I would do. So knowing I would do that, it makes me think, like, that's probably what Sunil's doing right now. Okay. He's saying, like, let's prop up this one person. How do we help keep these other folks down? You know, Kyle Martino coming in, part of me thinks maybe that's just a way to sort of counter counteract Eric Winalda. So like, split those votes. Split those votes, okay. Yeah, so, like, get Winalda out of the way. The rest of those guys, as smart as their stuff is, they don't stand a chance because they're just not as vocal. I mean, again, none of us are voting, right? So we don't know, but I have a feeling that they're they're just not going to be as influential. So Winelda, you've muffled that a bit with Cal Martino. Boom, knocks him down. Who steps in? Kathy Carter. Has a background, has a history, comes directly from Soccer United Marketing, right, which a lot of people are, are fearful of because of their close ties through between MLS and, uh, you know, USSF. I get it. So here comes this person, kind of, kind of handed to you. Perfectly picked, has a great background, nothing you could really pick apart besides where she works. And all of a sudden, you know, oh, and also the only female that's running, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, that, obviously people want her to win. I would want a female to be president of USSF. I think that'd be great. Um, so now you have someone in here who seemingly, uh, you know, you can't really 
pick apart who she is or what she's done or or anything. She seems handpicked for for the most part. We I heard nothing from this person yeah. until now. All of a sudden, at the same time, Sunil's like, "Oh, by the way, I'm going to go." And I, oh, I'm over here and I'm going to present myself. All right, it seems a bit odd. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it, I think the vote was what in February, so it's like a very can can people like apply to run like the day before the vote and like you know it just seems very no, i thought there was a deadline for getting endorsements yeah i don't know how i don't know how they but apparently she's she's doing it i mean very professional website i'm looking she did it through uh squares i don't want to say that because <laughs> they're not a sponsor yet um but uh you know she she mentions and she says uh, you know uh she wants to make soccer the number one con the number one sport in this the number one country which i think is very <laughs> brave of her um, the country of soccer yeah, yeah. <laughs> she wants to make it the number one sport in this country like that's it bar none uh she wants to maximize every resource and she talks about like people of all socioeconomic status deserve an equal chance to participate and thrive in the game there's nothing specific she's saying she's just using like these platitudes we've all heard before nothing against her i'm sure she has some great plans and i can't, i'm we've invited her on the podcast so hopefully Kathy, if you're listening, come on. We would love to talk to you. Um, and just like I would treat Putin, I would treat you with respect <laughs> because I don't know anything about you. But outside of that, this is, it seems sketchy. And it's I just feel like, all right, she's going to win. And it might just be a lot of the same <laughs> as to what we already have. That is weird. That you, you're like, uh, if you, I, we would love to have you on the show. It seems pretty sketchy, the whole thing that you're doing. But we love, we would treat you with the utmost respect. I would treat you with the utmost respect. I would be like, uh, you know, Miss Carter. <laughs> How sketchy is what's happening? You know what I mean? Like this would be very respectful. <laughs> Please don't listen to this. What, what? By the way, she does ask for samples. Don't send this. Out. <laughs> uh, but Sunugilati did say, uh, he, "quote I, I spent a lot, uh, spent a lot of time thinking about it and talking about about it with many people in, in many different positions. Many of whom told me I should run. Uh, but in the end, I think the best thing for me personally and that for never the happened. and for the federation is to see someone new in the job. That never happened. <laughs> Nobody told me that, that never <laughs> happened. <laughs> Look, I got. I swear, I swear, I got friends. Many <laughs> people. Many, 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 many great." People, many people like many, me. Many important people. <laughs> many people who I would say probably deserve the position more than me told me <laughs> that I should still be it. That never happened. That never happened. It was he's like the a persona non grata of, yeah. of, of of US soccer. No, nope. he's also gonna stay on like at SUM. He's gonna still be he's still a member of FIFA. He's, he's, he's gonna not going he's anywhere. gonna get his cake no matter what. Oh yeah. There's no <laughs> that's not the one thing about Kathy Carter that I will say is she said I will not be the CEO. She said my focus will be as the chairperson of the board and I will work with the elected and independent board members to govern the sport collectively and transparently. That's something we don't have now. So, I mean, of all the things that I don't think there was any specific things that is specific. Okay. And that is something she said. So maybe that maybe that'll cool. You know, uh, a lot of the the, uh, the 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 fear mongering that's happening. And I'm part of it. I just did it for about <laughs> ten minutes, but <laughs> I literally just did are it for you, ten minutes. We, we can just ask the, the fear monger. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. are you cooling down or what? I mean, I'm telling you, <laughs> pressure's coming back down. I'm telling you what Kathy Carter put in. If you get a chance, Google it. She uh, put an open letter out. Uh, she and she closed it with yours in soccer. Kathy Carter. So, I mean, I don't think I don't think anything that that's being said here is wrong. Um, I think there's just a fear of the timing. Okay. Yeah, I mean, look, this is a very pivotal moment uh, for soccer in this country, right? And uh, and it, I, I think it's fair for people to get concerned or you know or be skeptical because you want you know the right person there to to push things forward. It, to, I mean, to me, when I just hear the stuff when Aldo's saying about promotion relegation, and then and 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 I like that he responds to a lot of people on social media. Not to us. Not to us. Not yet. But we. But he does respond to people uh, who ask about you know. Uh, you know, for the people, the naysayers for promotional relegation, he'll respond and and say like, you know, we he wants to change, go to the the regular schedule, uh, the world schedule, and he wants to institute promotional relegation. And he's like, anyone who comes up with all these other reasons why we can't do it, it's just like they, they're just coming up with more excuses. What do you think about the winter schedule? The winter schedule. That's what he's talking about. He wants to go to the FIFA calendar. Yeah, but why, why do you say winter schedule? Is that is it? Because we the whole schedule is called winter schedule. Well, no. Well, we play in a summer schedule now. We okay. We're playing in a winter schedule. <laughs> okay. Again, this is why I'm the one you come to for the facts. I barely got any. Um, I think I. Th so in I other think, words, we'd be playing a long. I think within I think within the next couple years, I would say like within the next five years, I think soccer could be at a place where it could possibly compete with others, which which co college football, with NFL, and actually go to that schedule. And uh, I so I think 
for the success of the, and the growth of the league, I think it's important that we do do that. But I think right now, if we if if the season uh, next like next season began in the, the winter schedule, I would be concerned that like ratings and money and and like it, it would. Put, I would think it, I, I think it would put Major League Soccer uh, in a dangerous place where they could actually not not succeed. I mean, uh, here's my thing: Toronto uh, hosting the MLS Cup final would be happening in April or March. Oh, beautiful, a beautiful time. Toronto, gorgeous in April. Yeah. So, <laughs> only reason I think we should move to the winter schedule. Yeah. Uh, also, Minnesota United games would be lit. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the ball? It's somewhere in this seven feet of snow. <laughs> so, uh, spray paint but the we snow could also green. we could do what Germany does, and they they take that month break uh, in December. Yeah, uh, and that that could work too. I feel like our break would need to be like January, though. Uh, maybe a little long. Okay, because sure. it doesn't really seem to be like it's pretty mild out. It's fifty degrees right now. And, glo- and, and global warming has uh, a real interest in the yeah. winter schedule. Yeah. It is supporting the winter schedule. Might without I add, in a few years. The summer schedule will be the winter schedule, <laughs> so we might as well switch now and anticipate it because we don't we don't just have to worry about snow. Think about global flooding and that iceberg that's about to break and change, <laughs> you know, my apartment in Brooklyn into a mid ocean. We're gonna live in I'm gonna live in Venice <laughs> in a few weeks. It will be beautiful. Oh, I by mean, the way, speaking of ratings, I know we've gone pretty long, but um, speaking of ratings, uh, Taylor Twelman uh, gave a really great talk at something in Boston. It was like he talked about yes. ratings. We talked about this last week a little bit. I don't think you did. We we did. Okay. Well, speaking of ratings, it's not as bad as. Ever Everyone thinks so. Yeah. I don't think moving to uh, a winter schedule will be uh, that that drastic. But I agree with you; it probably shouldn't happen in the World Cup year. <laughs> I feel like that's compacting a lot of games. I th- yeah, but but just to have like a, a, a U.S. soccer uh, candidate saying like well, this can be done, yeah, and not sort of just uh, uh, poo pooing uh, it. Yeah, exactly. Which is great. So I always wanted to say that. <laughs> um, so uh, we'll uh, we'll go to our next segment in a moment. But I, I did want to talk about a couple quick things. Uh, Coach of the year. We didn't talk about that last week. Greg Vanny of uh, of Toronto FC. Uh, w- w- winning coach of the year. Obviously, Toronto is. Uh, they're saying is you know. It, I think it. The debate has sort of began. Is Toronto FC the greatest team in MLS history? They have to win it. They have to win the uh, the MLS Cup. So let's talk about that after this break. Yeah, but so uh, and uh, uh, yeah, I guess we'll, I wanted to talk about Diego Valeri, but I guess we'll talk about it. Yeah, after, let's talk about it the, uh, after, after this break. break. We've been talk- um, yeah, we've been talking a lot about World Cup. Um, so yeah, again, uh, Mother Russia, please invite us. <laughs> and we'll be very respectful. <laughs> we'll be right back after this. Yeah, thank you so much for listening to The Cooligans. We just want to take a break to talk about our sponsor. That's right. SeatGeek uh, is sponsoring the show again. Very excited to keep working with them. SeatGeek is the official MLS ticketing partner. Not bad. And Because there's a big event coming there's up. There's like a big MLS thing going on. I mean, I don't know if you heard, but we've been talking about it. We're about to talk a little bit more about it. But MLS Cup is coming up at the end of this week. If you want your tickets, the only place to go is SeatGeek. And how about this? If you've never been to SeatGeek before... You go to the app, you can go to SeatGeek.com, you put in Cooligans, and guess what's going to happen? Guess what's going to happen? I, I, oh, my God. I, I I can't. I'm so excited, I can't even guess. Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> the bulk of your seatbelts, folks. They're going to put $20 in your pocket just because you said the word Cooligans. Well, they're not going to put it in your pocket, but they're I mean, going to not take it out of your pocket. They're going to put it in your e-pocket. How's that sound? <laughs> they're going to give you 20 bucks. They're going to give you $20 just because you put the word Cooligans in That's there. right. So it's you like, get- you know, you go to those bars where you have to, like, say a code to get in. That's exactly what's happening, but it's <laughs> Instead of getting in a bar and paying twenty dollars for a drink at a place that's really not a speakeasy, they just don't have windows or a sign. <laughs> You're actually going to get money for using the word "cool" again. That's right. So make sure you go to SeatGeek.com, use the SeatGeek app uh, on your first purchase. Use the promo code "Cooligans" and you will get twenty dollars off your purchase. Look, the MLS Cup coming right up. It's going to be tough to get tickets. A hot ticket out there in Canada. So use SeatGeek now and get those tickets as soon as you can. Yeah, baby! Welcome back. Come on. Uh, yeah, we, we didn't mention it at the top of the show, but we have uh, a nice little uh, another frame up front. Beautiful. On our desk. Yeah, it's a pizza frame. Thank you very much, Jay Riddle. Jay Riddle did send us uh, a frame of pizza. I think he made it in his uh, third grade arts and crafts class. <laughs> it's beautiful. Uh, it's very, very, very <laughs> talented. Very <at> third grade. <laughs> um, and also, uh, you know, autographed uh, rookie card for Julian Gressel from mm-hmm. his draft. Well, uh, shouts to Julian Gressel, who's been on the podcast uh, twice now, once live. Underneath that, we've got 
the official funniest looking card of all time, and we'll put a big photo up if, if it's not zoomed in right now, but of, uh, of our leader, our mentor mm-hmm. in this game. Uh, Jimmy Conrad, everyone. So Jimmy Conrad defending in a very, very suspicious way. Very hey, sus. If you're on, if you're on the train going uptown, yo, it's mad sus. <laughs> mad sus. Yeah, but you, you know what? You gotta, you gotta defend however you gotta defend. You, Sometimes you, you gotta box out. Depending on, <laughs> doesn't matter what party you're about to use. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Yeah. Here's my question: Why would they pick that for the card? There, was, <laughs> there might have been millions of other photos taken. <laughs> and Jim, Jimmy did send us that card. Yeah, right? Jimmy yeah, sent us that. Right. He sent us a couple other things. So from time to time, all the stuff that we were sent by fans will be. Making its way here. Fans, if you want to send us stuff for the studio, I would suggest putting it in a frame because that seems like the easiest thing <laughs> sure. uh, to put it up. Um, but yeah, uh, feel free to send it. Send it to us and we will we will put yeah, it we'll, here. Uh, we'll just, you can it. email you can email us at soccercooligans at gmail.com to get the we'll, address and tell you the address. We can actually have people send stuff here. here now. Yeah. All right. And we'll send it right to right to Mike. Yeah. I never got to do another thing again. <laughs> it's beautiful. Um, all right. So uh, a couple things in this segment that we're gonna we're gonna talk about the the second leg of the playoff matches from last week, even though it was ages ago, but yeah. we didn't, you know, By we last get, week, you mean last year, <laughs> we didn't get to talk about it. And, uh, and we'll talk about, uh, you know, uh, Greg Vanny, coach of the year, Diego Valeri, uh, MVP. Let's, how about we start with that? Because that's, uh, that's the, the, the most recent news, uh, Diego Valeri, uh, obviously, obviously. I mean, he did. He played so so well. Uh, I think it, I forgot his stats exactly. I think it was uh, it was it tw- twenty one goals. Yeah, I mean, also just that wasn't his job. You know, he's a creative midfielder. His job is not to go out there and score the goals. But when Fernando Adi goes out, yeah, he steps up in a very big way. And might I add, there was just no one else for that team to step up. There was just no one else on that team that could step up. Um, I mean, they tried. Who, who look, would I you mean, have had? Look, Maddox obviously t- uh, took his position. Did he? Did he? No. What he I did mean, he was... Didn't, he didn't correctly do it. Maddox, but, <laughs> well, yeah. He didn't do what he was supposed to. But <laughs> Maddox... Here's my thing. So I've, I've said before that I don't think Maddox... Uh, probably, I don't even know if he'll be on the team. I don't know. I don't know if he stayed on. I think he was actually one of the people that maybe wasn't renewed, or there was rumors of him going down uh, to USL or, or Timbers too. Whatever. I don't know exactly what's going to happen. But the one thing they were able to use was his pace. Yeah. You know, he's not exactly a center forward. You know, the dude's not big enough to be a center forward. But his pace did give Valeri amount the amount of space that he was able to you know to play in. And you don't want to give Diego Valeri time. Or space because he will hurt you every time. Yeah, and that's uh, he had so twenty one goals, eleven assists, and and uh, f- I think he was the, the mo- I think the most goals by a midfielder. Yeah, uh, in, in an MLS again, we're season. not we're not double. I mean, we both have no, but it's just in front of us, and there's one right behind us, and we're not double checking. But but you're right. I mean, just the general tone, like y- yeah, look at how much he did, how dominant he yeah, was, exactly. as, especially you know in the position that he was in. Uh, but there was a great moment. I love the, the social media love that Diego Valeri was getting. Portland Timbers really did uh, a bunch of cool things. That they, they, got. they did this last year uh, for, for David Villa yeah. when he won uh, uh, the most valuable player. But they, they got like a, a lot of uh, either uh, just players around the league, uh, people uh, or players around the world uh, to give like, a, you know, just say a nice message. David Villa got like, he had what, some of the great ones because like it was Sergio Busquets, Busquets yeah, every, everybody, <laughs> everybody in Barcelona. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but Diego the, Costa, which he didn't actually send a video. He just two footed. Yeah. Somebody, which, which is, was, I mean, not that's how he sends, that's how he sends his love. <laughs> you don't want to be there for Christmas. <laughs> his, uh, his, his children have no legs uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because they're loved <laughs> because, I, but I love them. Um, <laughs> but he got, he got, some love from uh, he got some love from Kaká, which you understand that. But oddly enough, all the way from Monaco, uh, Radamel Falcao sending a nice little message to Diego Valeri. Really? Yeah. So I'm like, I'm, I'm a, how, how you know? How you know him? How, yeah, you, I how know. you know each other? <laughs> he in a cafeteria. How you know? <laughs> so that was cool. Yeah, uh, did they ever play together? Yeah. They, I mean, they must have. Yeah. I don't know where they played. U team? Maybe in uh, Valeri. He came. He play, He was playing in Argentina. Argentina. Did it? Did Falcao ever play in Argentina? I don't know. They must have. We gotta, yo, we gotta have to. We have to do the six degrees of separation. We need with. to sleuth this whole thing. <laughs> um, but there was a great moment. Uh, you know, they they put out a couple of videos of 
you know, uh, Valeri uh, announcing uh, him receiving the phone call from Don Garber. Yeah, there was uh, NMLS live on Instagram. And I just I love when uh, you know Latin American players or you know or, or just Spanish players that would be one last year and getting the call from Garber because it's just yeah. it is it, it feels it's like hello, Mister Garber. Yes. Like, <laughs> hello, Senor Garber. <laughs> And it's, you know, Don Garber's like, hola, senor <laughs> Valeri. Yeah, he sounds like Michael Bloomberg. Yeah. <laughs> Como tu estas ahora mismo? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, it, was, it was very cute, yeah, seeing him interact with, uh, with Don Garber. Uh, but really, the, the, the cutest. The though. cutest. The best, the best video. Was him interacting with Dan Quartermans. <laughs> oh, it was so cute. No, no. With, with his uh, uh, telling... Uh, his daughter, yeah. that he won uh, Most Valuable Player, and that was really, really sweet because his daughter, like, kind of, uh, she, she lost her mind. Uh, yeah, she goes, she's gets super cute. We actually have the video. Yeah, we have the video, so we'll we'll, uh, we'll uh, play it right now. It is a here. It is okay. Cool. So this is <laughs> Valeri, his yeah. daughter. By the way, just using an iPad. Like, yeah, Dad, what do you want? The sum of two numbers is nineteen, and the difference is five. So she's doing her, like her math homework. Yeah. And he's like, stop doing your homework. <laughs> she's got the Apple pen. So Valeria getting paid well if you can afford the Apple pen. Me dieron el MVP. Me dieron el MVP. He said he won the MVP. If you haven't seen this video. Yeah. Yeah, her face. It looks like she got a Christmas gift. That's what makes it so cute. Yeah. It looks like she won it. Yeah. And then you could hear. Yeah, that's not Vitas. That's uh, that's a little girl screaming. <laughs> you could hear the screeching. He doesn't trophy case. Again. Again. So she told him to get a trophy case. Yeah, she's like, well, now you got to get a trophy case. <laughs> Which, if you don't know, his daughter is what? Maybe, what does she look like, seven or eight? Yeah, maybe younger. Six, and also, seven. that's great. She's not only seven, eight and doing her math homework, she's also his manager. Really pushing him. <laughs> really pushing him. Telling him what he needs to do, yeah. Get your agent on the phone and tell him, you need to win another trophy. Yeah, you need to get a trophy case. You need to... Uh... This is the cutest. Just like a great moment between a dad and daughter. Yeah. Again, she's picking places out in the apartment or in the house where the trophy case will go. <laughs> so yeah, that was uh, that, that was pretty awesome from them. Uh, cool of, and uh, Valeri definitely does seem like uh, like not only obviously he's a, he's a great player on the field, but he just seems like you seeing all these accolades and seeing uh, everyone's showing being so supportive. I'm like. This is like a, just a good dude. Yeah, he's just a good guy. And you know <laughs> what? You don't want them to be, right? Like, don't you, because maybe they're not your favorite player, they don't play specifically for your team, you want there to be something that you don't like. You know what I mean? But when it comes to Diego Valeri, there is nothing to not like. Yeah, Even yeah. when we spoke to him at MLS World Cup. Uh, MLS World Cup? <sighs> I'm almost all star. Oh boy! What God you, you gonna be like it. that guy? What are you gonna yeah, be? Like? Yeah. Well, when Chicago Fire makes it, you didn't realize Diego Valeri yeah, gets to play with Radamel Falcao. We thought we solved this whole it, thing. It, it's the unified cups, the, the <laughs> Major League Soccer World Cup. I gotta be honest. If Don Garber listens to this, he just wrote that on his whiteboard. He was just like, "I'm a last That is Cup. a brilliant idea. Complete takeover. <laughs> Sidney uh, Goliath is like, I got a plan. Call me back. <laughs> no, the so, but you, the fact that you mentioned that when we were at All Star, the uh, uh, Kale Parker was with us, and obviously yeah. Kale, she's a huge, huge uh, Seattle Sounders huge fan. Huge Seattle Sounders. But fan. when when we so did not want. <laughs> did not want to like Diego Valeri. Didn't whatsoever. want to be around Diego no, Valeri. No, didn't no. want to. <laughs> uh, why is he even here? She doesn't talk like that. She's gonna hate. So, that it, but it is. It was interesting because the first thing she said after uh, after we had interviewed uh, Valeri, she did say she was like, "Man, I don't, I don't even want to like this guy. But he's yeah. so nice. <laughs> he's so nice. Yeah, and he's like not even like overly charming or anything. He's just like a sweetheart of a dude. Yeah. And we talked to him, we asked him a bunch of questions, and then, you know, how important is it for, I think you could see the video, but then we also asked him about mate, if he takes it with sugar or without, and his eyes lit up. He's like, these people know what mate is? <laughs> you can clearly tell it's like four people in that entire locker room who know what yeah. it was. Yeah, but then when we asked uh, not Nacho Piatti, yeah. he, what, they, it was... Uh, Valeri's is no, no sugar. sugar. Piatti's like, of course you of course have, sugar. have sugar. Who puts no sugar <laughs> in their mate? You know, whoever doesn't put sugar probably doesn't even deserve the most valuable player I mean, award. I'm going to be honest, <laughs> that suggestion at least, you should grade him on a curve. <laughs> For that most valuable player. And also the fact that they don't have to play Minnesota is the only player, you know, uh, quality-wise. Yeah, it's just, I thought it was a little much from uh, Piatti. Uh, so, yeah, but congratulations to Valeria. That was, uh, well, I mean, well-deserved. And also congratulations on the beautiful family and the beautiful home. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah. I mean, is that, is, do, you, do you see that? And you're like, you know what? I want to. 
I want to start a family too. I know. I look at that and I go, oh, thank God that's not me. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you know, if I want the bratty kid tell me yeah. to build a trophy case, also, no thanks. Just smudging up my iPad <laughs> with her homework. Nah, son. <laughs> nah, son. Go get your own, yeah. Um, so, yeah, and also, uh, uh, Greg Vanny, we didn't talk about it last week, did win Coach of the Year. And we were mentioning, yeah. It, Greatest his, regular season team in history? Most points uh, in or MLS. Tied, right? Tied. No, they no, actually got they it. They, won. Won. they got 68. 69. And they got six. No, sixty-eight. We well, used to be. Well, it used to be, and they, they got sixty-nine. They got one more, sixty-nine. So yeah. Bow wow wow. Eh, burrito. So, uh, yeah. Not. I mean, not not a huge surprise. Uh, you you have to give them that uh, that award uh, for obvious reasons. So. Uh, let's let's talk about the second leg of of the the games. We'll go through these uh, pretty quickly. Pretty quickly. I mean, look, you guys saw it already. You know who's in the MLS Cup, um, the MLS World Cup. You know who's the going. MLS World Cup. But let's start. Uh, Toronto. Th- this game was on on Wednesday. This was November 29th. Uh, Toronto did win uh, one nothing. So they are on aggregate as well uh, because the first uh, the first leg was nil nil. Was nil nil, which was like a scary moment for. If if Columbus scores and ties, they win. They win Columbus. because it's an away goal. So th- you know there was no rest for Toronto. I got to give it up to Josie though. What a big man moment! Uh, he got completely not in in error. By the way, it wasn't on purpose. But I believe it was Awful who kind of fell on him and yeah. rolled his ankle. And Josie hit the ground twice and had to get magic spray and retaped and the whole night came back out and ends up scoring. A great one-two, a yeah. back heel from Javinko at the top of the box, back heel to Javinko to um, to Vasquez. Vasquez time hits uh, Josie. No, no, wait. no, no. no he go back heel to Josie, Josie to Vasquez. Vasquez it, turns, gives it to a running uh, Josie. Which what is his name? A booby, a buoy, a buoy, Abu Bakar, <laughs> Abu Bakar, Alice Abu Bakar. Was it? Are you sure it was him? That was defending. That yeah. threw himself on the ground. He didn't even slide. He threw his he, face towards like, the ball. He, <laughs> he threw his body the way, like, you know that FIFA celebration where you don't put your arms out and you fall like a fish? He did that. He <laughs> fell. He FIFA celebrated into the ball. Like, there was nothing you could do. He read the play correctly. Uh, but Josie just... Every little bit of, of limp he had went away for about 10 seconds. Yeah. And he scored this monster of a goal. And the winner... And then he's walking around yelling, this is my house... That feeling, they're going to replay that just before the MLS Cup final. Because that feeling, I, you know, I look, I love Seattle. I don't think anyone's going to stop Toronto. Okay. I mean, so we'll get into, we'll get into our predictions, Scott, because I don't really agree with you. Right, because uh, my prediction is Seattle wins 3-0. I have to say that. <laughs> no, go for it. Um, but they, that was a big moment. But you have to, uh, in, in that game, Columbus, they had plenty of opportunities. Uh, look, and especially the fact that, that Zach Steffen did save them uh, after the penalty. Where, where, I mean. This I, dude is, I mean, making. He's from another planet. Making a name for himself. Uh, I, I think his middle name is because he's from another planet. <laughs> but it's, uh, he, he stops the penalty from uh, Vasquez after the the foul from uh, what was it Josh Williams, I believe. Yeah. Uh, and so the, Columbus, I I, I I I feel like they they threw it away. They really had a lot of great chances. I wouldn't say they threw it away. They threw as much as possible at the goal. It, it just it was, didn't go in. Yeah. Bono, Bono, you know, Bono had a great game. It's Bono, but yeah, Bono is Bono. Uh, is, is pretty. Too. <laughs> Bono had a had a great game, just as much as Zach Steffen did, or is it Stefan? <laughs> uh, as much as Zach Steffen, Jack, Zach Steffen is just in these MLS Cup playoffs. And I guess in the in the last game of the regular season, he's played himself into a great position within the U.S. Men's National. For, team. At the very least, a raise, uh, for, you know, for for Austin Athletic. Uh, yeah. so just <laughs> but um, which hurts doubly now when you think about that about Columbus losing because this was a great opportunity for them to kind of, you know, shove it in the face of everyone who wants them gone. Sure, it, it 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 could have been the the moment sort of reenacted that, that the New England Patriots you know after Tom Brady was suspended those first four games and then they end up winning the Super Bowl yeah uh, and uh, and the commissioner has to give the trophy <laughs> to Tom Brady and all that stuff so it could have been that we could have had a Garber uh, giving giving the 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 trophy to pre court I and mean, it would have been super weird would have been really <laughs> awkward they just wink a lot so we don't get that by the way did you see the ratings for all the playoff games the I, number one city I did see it Columbus Columbus, Columbus Ohio, Ohio. 
<laughs> O-H. Oh, oh. <laughs> you mean O-H-A space question mark in a box. <laughs> uh, but I think a lot of blame has to be put on, and, and he probably has to feel kind of bad, Justin Miram. Two great, great chances Not this just game. his fault. You're right. Not just his fault, though. No. Ola Kamara is out there for one thing. Yeah. Miram did not give up on that one play. Gets the ball back on the wing one times. An amazing cross. Yeah. And it's literally in front of Ola Kamara. It's and he doesn't put it in. And it would have gone in. There was no way Bono, Bono, any of them, <laughs> The Edge, those are the only members of that band I know, Seal, nobody would have stopped it. Nobody. Uh, yeah, it's they have to be... You know, just furious with themselves, and just I mean, yeah, he had those. He had that one shot. Uh, he had that one great pass yeah. that from from Kamara uh, that Michael Bradley did stop. But he took a poor touch, and then the other one where he skied over the bar. Yeah, my, if you want to blame Miriam for something, it's that one where uh, Bradley got back in time and slid in yeah. front of him, um, and Ebu Bakard his way into him. Uh, <laughs> Miriam should have won timed it when he got that, and yeah. he didn't. He took an extra touch, didn't need to touch. Uh, you know, sort of t- too strong of a touch. It went too far, and next thing you know. Not a goal. Bummer. And that would have changed that game because they would have made Toronto have to score twice. Exactly. So, uh, and didn't Zach Steffen also uh, stop Javinko's uh, penalty slash 27 foot, 27 yard? Uh, yes, he did do that. Did he or was it the wall? It might have been the wall. I, I mean, it was obviously it didn't I know, score. I, I know. I mean, look, but anytime uh, Javinko. Have, you know, there's a free kick. It's like, all right, well, this is... This so is just like, put it on the this board. This is a layup, yeah. yeah. Don't even do it. Look, we're just so we all the get, score up. We all generally get worried. Uh, so, yeah. So, obviously, Toronto uh, going to the MLS Cup final. Uh, exci- BMO Field was was, was pretty uh, pretty lit after Josie scored. Yeah. Uh, he went he went pretty wild after that. After I'm that hoping goal. to see that atmosphere at MLS Cup this year. Well, you know they want they you know they obviously they they want to they feel like they they it was stolen uh, from them last time. So they're hoping to you know obviously get uh, get get some redemption. So let's talk about the Western Conference uh, second leg. Between the Seattle Sounders and the Houston Dynamo, Dynamo, it would have been really great if the Houston Dynamo showed up. Showed uh, up. They should have been there. They should have been there uh, because it was an important. Their fans were there. Yeah, it was on their calendar. Yeah, uh, and they were just like, you know what? I'm just like, uh, I'm just like not really feeling it Send today. in Dynamo too. <laughs> um, uh, Seattle wins this game three 0 just completely dominant. Five 0 aggregate. I mean, why even talk about it? Brewing. I think the big impo- the big important thing here is. How essential will Will Bruin be in the MLS Cup final? Is he going to play a big part? Is he going to score a lot? Is he going to? Is he? Is the guy who showed up to that second leg going to show up to that game? That's the big question for Seattle. Yeah. Well, I, I will say this, I, I, Mike. If 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 Seattle wins the MLS Cup, I will. I definitely think uh, Will Bruin deserves uh, the MVP for. For the MLS, uh, he's been cup super playoffs. essential. He's been, I, honestly, yeah. I think he's been the best player. He's been so incredible, the, right. dominant. Obviously, the 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 first goal from uh, Victor R- Victor Rodriguez wouldn't happen without the what I thought was one of the most gorgeous no look passes uh, this season. It, I, and and coming from big torso Bruin, you yeah. know, it's just it's, that's not the you kind don't of, think of fancy feet when you, you don't think, think of, Will of Bruin. finesse when you think nah. of this man when you think of the dancing bear, nah, the, uh, and thumbs up. You don't think of like a ballet bear. You think of like you know <laughs> he's probably doing the robot, yeah, because of you know there are I know there are some bears that wear tutus and do yeah. uh, you know have have beautiful routines. Sometimes uh, I walk through certain neighborhoods where people think I'm one of those bears. <laughs> sure, I can't do anything. <laughs> like, can you please stop pinching my butt, sir. <laughs> Excuse. <laughs> me. Hashtag me too. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Seattle does win this 3 uh, I mean, the big points of the game, you know, uh, Bruin gets... Uh, did, how many goals did he score? Two or one? Uh, I don't remember. So He scored... No, he assisted on one. He assisted on and one. And he had that beautiful yeah, chip. Demp- it was, yeah, the chip at the end. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dempsey got that goal. Yeah. Uh, but how incredibly... Even when... Even before the red card. So we should uh, discuss that. Uh, that moment. So that was uh, between uh, uh, Martinez. What's it? Uh, I can't remember the dude whose last name starts with a D. Uh, Jord- is it Jordy Delem, I believe? Yeah. So so Delem fell in a way where it looked like Martinez thought he was sort of letting his body 
put all his weight on him on the way yeah. down, which is something that's like, you know, common when teams play really physical. They just sort of like let their body fall to create a lot of like additional weight falling on the player. Not necessarily to hurt the player, but to be like extra physical, but without it getting, you know, in trouble for it. And Martinez thought that that's exactly what happened. Looking at the tape, I don't think so. I think you could see that his body was just falling in an awkward position. Mm -hmm. So on the way up, he sort of mushed, using using his hands on the back of the neck slash head, mushed Delem. Yeah, Delem. In Delem's the, in the head, back of the head into yeah. the grass. Which is, it looks bad. <laughs> also, gully move, though. <laughs> yeah. Anytime you see a mush, we're all about it. We think there should be more mushing in the game. But mushes, but mushes are mostly face for, forward. Face forward. You yeah. see the mush coming. The, you should be able to see a mush coming. <laughs> this mush, was a sneak mush. This is a sneak mush. You okay? can't sneak mush. <laughs> we know. Yeah. I mean, that's like... That's, there's no, snuck, uh, there's that's no mush, sucker mushing. <laughs> that's mush 101. Yeah. You don't sneak mush. That's mush bush league. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have it. Bush we can't mush. have it in this league. In fact, that's probably why the kid got the red card. <laughs> the guy probably went up to him. He's like, "Look, I saw it on the VAR. Yeah, so you got to mush him in the face. You got to mush a, a, a face mush. Yeah, that's t we understand it's that. Totally okay, okay, you know that's uh, allowed. You know, passion's running high. Yeah. It's it, it's a playoff yeah. game. Yeah. Dude, pull the fuck boy move, <laughs> landing on you. You mush him. Allowed. Yeah. Tip we, for that. <laughs> he did tell you the tat. You can't. You can't suck a mush him. You yeah. can't sneak mush. Yeah. Not I, allowed in the MLS. But he did. Uh, yeah, he. I mean, he, he pushed his face into the ground, and even though it wasn't like insanely aggressive, no, I mean it was. It, the purpose of it, it had no footballing, it had no soccer specific, <laughs> you know, task other than to say like, "Nah, son." Yeah, I'm gonna just curb stomp you, dog. Yeah, yeah nah, son. <laughs> Not it, on my ninety. Um, but look, this happened in the 66th minute. Uh, they were already down two goals. I mean, how frustrated were Houston? They need. They knew. They knew they needed. Uh, a miracle, and, and and they weren't. Who, uh, who, uh, Albert, uh, Elise wasn't playing yeah. because of yellow card accumulation. Uh, so th it was going to take a miracle. But they, at that point, they were just like so frustrated, and it was clearly unnecessary from Martinez. But now we know Martinez, uh, since he 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 is suspended for the first game of of the 2018 MLS season. Uh, so that's so pow pow. Yeah, on. So bad, bad, bad something boy. to look forward to <laughs> all winter. And uh, uh, if you're if you're um if you're a Houston fan, I think the only thing you would have hoped for is that maybe the team came out a bit more um aggressive. Yeah. That's maybe all you could hope for. I mean, look at they they were they, they were down and they were they, kind of out anyway. So they, what are they you gonna were, do? They were relying on uh who was it? Thirty eight year old Vincente. Vincente, <laughs> Vincente Sanchez. Uh he was trying his best, but every after every shot missed, he was like, Guys, I'm old. What, yeah. do, you, what do you want me to do? <laughs> I've got not much left in the tank, you know? <laughs> um so the yeah, in, incredibly dominant. Uh but so we have Seattle against Toronto again. It's a repeat. A repeat. Um, you no, know, don't don't change your dials, kids. That it's a new show. It's <laughs> yeah, not a repeat. <laughs> whole new season, same old cast. <laughs> um, yeah. So I mean, I'm hoping, I'm hoping for a better game than last year. I, I expect a better game than last year. I think just just having Will Bruin in there, I think that's going to change uh, change everything. But I honestly think. The team in better form right also, now. Also, Dempsey, though. Dempsey playing. Dempsey you know playing. That you could tell it was a sour point when I asked uh, Schmetzer, and he rolled his eyes at me just for being there. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I asked him, hey, you know, how does Dempsey feel? And he's like, he was here. He was here. He was out there with the guys. He's great in the locker room. Of yeah. course he wishes he was out there. There was a defensive answer there. And you could tell it's because, like, yeah, I mean, the guy, the guy is who he is. He's probably the only person that I can recall in the men's national team that has – a similar a sort of aura around him to some of those guys like Alexi Sanchez and, and those guys who just want to be out there scoring. They just want to be out there scoring. Sure. They, they, like Joseph Martinez gets upset when he's just not out there scoring. He knows he could help the team. He wants it to be him. He's going to get that chance. I mean, other than maybe getting an injury during practice or something stupid like that happening, he's going to get that chance this year. So I think we're going to see a lot from him. And it must have been difficult for him to see his team not even get a shot on goal. Granted, he got to win and he got to say what he said about Toronto. I mean, about Portland. So that was funny. But I'm sure in the back of his head, he was like, guys, I could have at least gotten a shot on goal. <laughs> so Toronto, here's the thing. Like, if Toronto would have brought the exact same team and now you're giving me um, Seattle minus Alonzo, but with Dempsey, yeah. I think I still give the edge to Seattle. But Toronto is coming in having the greatest season in MLS history. 
playing really well. Sure, they didn't end the season really well, but they're playing really strong, and the team is just better all around. Uh, okay, th- that's fair. My my prediction this year. I know last year I was very Dang. much. I was very much. Uh, I thought Toronto was gonna. We all thought win Toronto fairly was gonna easily. Win three, one, yeah. uh, we were wrong. Uh, but this season, uh, I honestly think Seattle is the stronger team. Especially they're in better form throughout the playoffs. They've been scoring more goals. Uh, I know the Eastern Conference is, was easily. You know, it was, it was it was much more challenging than the Western, but. Seattle just looks. They look. They look in a better mood. That's all. That's all I think. I mean, I, I without a doubt, Toronto probably has a chip on their shoulder. They want to get revenge and the whole thing. But when you see the kind of form that that they're in, you know, I, I, you know, Jordan Morris is probably he, he's not. He's definitely not starting the game. Uh, he might not even play. Uh, they. They. It's like they may not even need him. But I do think. I think Seattle. I'm I'm favoring Seattle. I, I'd be I, honestly, I would be a little surprised if Seattle does not win. Uh, but it would be brutal for Toronto to lose MLS Cup two years in a row at, at home. home. At home. At home. <laughs> it's like, yo, you're not even gonna allow to go yeah. outside. Your your family won't even let you back inside the door. Those fireworks are officially gonna be <laughs> just expired. They're like, oh, we tried to hold off for a year. We just gotta we gotta let these things go. Yeah, we just gotta throw them into a river. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I honestly I think uh, yeah I think Seattle. I'm, I'm yeah I'm going with Seattle this year. I you know what? Look, I want Seattle to win. I think it would be lit. But also, we're not gonna get a chance to go to Seattle to see that parade. So we're gonna be in Toronto. There's a chance <laughs> that we see that parade. Okay. So maybe I I guess I'll just go to I'll go with Toronto for for the purpose of us being different here. Hmm. I don't I don't know that it's going to be much different than last year. I think it's going to be nil-nil, and it's going to go to extra time. But, you know, people love Javinko. I honestly think look for someone like Bradley, look for someone like Altidore, and look for someone like Vasquez. I mean, Vasquez maybe not so much, but, like, someone like Altidore and someone like uh, Bradley just – they're trying to make up for, for what's gone on in the last year, and they're playing with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder, and they're playing angry, and that's not something we've seen very often. So – I just think they're going to be too strong. Nobody do- cares, bro. I don't care why. I don't <laughs> care. You're mad about all oh, people booing you where? I do not care. Yeah, no. Look, <laughs> no I don't sympathy. feel bad for you, bro. No I don't sympathy. Feel bad Maybe, for you, bro. look, talk to me in 2018. I might be a, a, a you know, a, nah, a wiser talk man. Talk to me like 2022. <laughs> you got to give us some time. We'll for see this how to I feel. Out. But all right, if, if Schmetzer wins two in a row, do you consider him a great, a great coach now? A great, an elite coach. You know what? I, I, in MLS, you know, I, I, I'll be frank. I, I don't know enough about the, the, uh, how how soccer players are managed to to really uh, compare. I, I feel like I haven't seen enough uh, to, uh, to to understand like the nuance but behind just, it. Just but, from what you've seen, but in the what, from so from far. him, you know, he he seems like a a, a hands off. He has a more hands off approach. He doesn't seem. We don't know that for sure, but yeah, I yeah. Would agree so with you. This is my perception, like like most coaches in any sport. Like this is yeah. you know my guess. Schmetzer seems. Uh, you know, we always get. To, we made the jokes about him seeing seeming like a you know a cool substitute teacher and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, but he does seem like hands off approach. He seems like a a, a man who can uh, to relate that he can relate to a player. He does look like him and Chad Marshall have like a garage full of like. Trains like there's like a, like a big train scene, <laughs> a train set. like a like a track like what do they call those a train things? set? Yeah, yeah. Like you know what I'm talking about, like okay, toy yeah. trains or whatever. There's a, there's a word for it. The, he has hobbies. That's the yeah, thing. yeah. But like it's like real weird. Like they dress up as conductors together. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, I think from uh, just his his demeanor compared to let's say Greg Vanny. Greg Vanny seems like a a little stoic, more of a robot. Out yeah. there, just like just uh, adding fuel to to the machine, he just seems he seems like the 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 you know like the the villain in an eighties movie. Yeah, you know, yeah he does. The, he he runs the evil karate school. Right. He <laughs> does look like he died during like you know uh, Die Hard. Yeah, he <laughs> did. I, uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm paraphrasing because I don't I don't have the quote in front of me, but he did mention that. Uh, the Eastern Conference was was a, a dogfight, and is Seattle ready, uh, you know, for for a game like that or whatever? So, a little bit condescending towards Seattle already, or adding adding some bulletin, some bulletin board material. Like, but yeah, I mean, he's not wrong. Seattle finished uh, second in the West with fifty three points. Toronto finished with sixty nine points in a tougher conference. Nice, bro. Yeah, bro. Thanks uh, for bringing that up. With, 
69. <laughs> but, I mean, that's a big gap, and Seattle, for the most part, plays in an easier conference. Uh, yeah, I mean, this year, yeah, that's the case. Uh, but again... Again, no, none of this they also matters won, anymore. They also won last year, so, I mean, whatever. <laughs> they, <laughs> they didn't host did. it they, they I'm didn't just saying, there's a lot year. of reasons to understand where he's coming from. Yeah, but the, the team looks very different uh, from last year. Obviously, Leardom yeah. is there, uh, Rodriguez is there. And the postseason is very different. Yeah, I think they, they're, there's more firepower than there was uh, last season, without a doubt. So, so you know, yeah. they were, maybe they'll get two shots on goal. Maybe that's... The, the, the signings that they made were for, like, you know, for this exact moment to get a couple more shots on goal, and I think that's going to happen. I, I, I don't think it's going to be as defensive uh, as last year. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for a big game, but again, I think Seattle takes it. So we're going to be in Toronto. Uh, we're going to be doing some fun stuff there. Uh, I would suggest, because we don't know exactly what we're doing just yet, yeah. uh, make sure you get on our email list. Uh, go to Soccer Cooligans. That's going to be big. And uh, yeah, so there we. Uh, because we are planning something. We're planning something, but we don't know if it's going to happen. Just but here's yet. what we want. We want. Uh, look, we know a lot of Seattle fans listen. Um, you know, Toronto uh, fans as well. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is, Corn Dog Squad and 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 you know, uh, the whole crew and and Tropic Sounders and everyone who's going to be there if they're going to be there. Kale's going to be there. Yeah. Uh, we would love to have some uh, a lot of the Seattle fans at whatever it is that we're planning. But we also want Toronto fans there. It's going to be for yeah. it's going to be for all the fans. So we want everyone to go. We're trying to figure out when to we're, do we're it. We're trying to schedule yeah. more, so, more, more like a bar fight. Exactly. <laughs> we want everyone to fight each other. And you know, forget the game. This is the real winner. Um, so if you are a member of one of those fan groups and you know that you guys are planning an event or a schedule, let us know so we can plan it around that. Um, I think Vocal Minority might still listen, podcast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, those guys still listen. If Toronto, if you're a Toronto fan, if you're going to be at the game, if you're a member of uh, U Sector or one of the other... Um, Red Patch Boys. Red Patch Boys. Also, we yeah. just put out uh, an interview that Nick Ciccolone just uh, did uh, yeah. with, uh, uh, with with the president of, uh, of Red the Red Patch, Patch Boys, Boys yeah. which, uh, which was great. You can also look at that on our website website's a great interview. We'll get in contact with him um, and, and any of the other supporters groups. If you guys are planning an event, let us know when it is so we do not uh, step on those toes. We would love for you guys to be a part of what we're doing. We're trying to get uh, some big names. We're trying to get some sponsors. Again, this is all short notice for everybody because of the, the, the nature of how this is. So it will be difficult, but we're at the very least going to try to put something together uh, for you guys to be a part of. So uh, send us any uh, information at soccercooligans at gmail.com if you know of what your schedule is going to be or if, if you're planning something and you want us to be a part of it. It, please yep. let us know. We are there, um, and we're going to be there Friday, Saturday, and part of Sunday. So uh, let us know if you want us to be a part of something. We would love to be a part of it, and let us know if you have something scheduled so that we don't plan, so we can plan around that. Exactly. All right, everybody. So I'm excited. We'll, we'll probably uh, maybe even record a podcast out of. Uh, oh yeah, that's yeah. going to be planned. We did that last year, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, in Toronto, uh, maybe we'll get the same exact room and same. Maybe we just do the do whole... everything exactly the same, <laughs> except. <laughs> Our videographer might not be able to go now. Yeah, we uh, the league has denied us a press pass for our videographer because because there were so many requests this year. Okay, but we adjusted it so that he <laughs> didn't have to be on the field. So I'm hoping that hopefully it works out. We're trying. So to... we do know some people from MLS listen. If you are still listening to this podcast, <laughs> you have any power whatsoever? <laughs> can you help us out? Uh, it was denied. It was adjusted, and then it was never looked at again. I know the window is closed, but if it's possible at all, if uh, we. Can and get our videographer there, just someone to follow us around with a camera. They do not need field access. But Dave Monsion was there last year. It wasn't a problem last year. Yeah, we're it's hoping. It's in the same place. <laughs> it's the same teams. <laughs> the only thing different is going to be Clint Dempsey's going to be there, and Dave Monsion will not. Yeah. So if you can find a way to get us. I mean, the guy could just hang out with us. He doesn't have to be on the field. Um, but just someone so that he can't even get his money back for the flight. So just. It is our plate, yeah. I mean, we, we, we don't want to pay for the flight. So uh, if you could find a way to, to get that passed, that would be awesome. So for anyone who listens to this podcast that has any authority or an MLSsoccer.com email, uh, thank you. Again, your coworkers of mine. So, yes, yeah, so we will be in uh, Toronto uh, this weekend uh, covering the game, all that stuff. Make sure you follow us on social media, at, uh, on Instagram, at Soccer Cooligans, uh, on all social media platforms. But on Instagram, we'll do a bunch of Instagram stories, uh, on Snapchat a little bit as well. Just a bunch of stuff on YouTube, so make sure you follow and subscribe to our YouTube. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we're going to try to have as much fun as possible and bring you guys behind the scenes of what's going on and just how cold we are. Exactly. I, I, it's supposed to be a little bit warmer than last year. I think it's supposed to be about 32, 33 degrees. Which uh, is about just the freezing. 10 degrees uh, warmer than it was uh, last year. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, guys, follow us along on all social media so you can see just how cold we are. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's not that cold. Maybe we're just sitting there with that little stuff on our nose and those reflecting things and we're just getting a nice tan. <laughs> (laughs) Maybe that's it. It's also going to be a 4 o'clock game, so it won't be too freezing like it was last year. Yeah. But, guys, follow us along. Toronto, we're coming to you. Don't forget, email us. Let us know about those events. My name is Alexis Guerrero. My name is Christian Polanco. Together, what are we? The The Cooligans! We're going to be so cold!